the reason we looked at the heritage varieties was we were doing a terroir project which yeah. was looking at flavours and we wanted to look at the older varieties for different flavours. That led us to the heritage varieties. Six years ago the project starts where we went up to Back Weston, the Department of Agriculture in County Kildare and we've asked them would they have any old varieties that we could grow and at the time they had Hunter variety available and they had Goldthorpe. So with our partners Minch Malt, we grew these varieties over a number of years. So it took three years to get enough seed to grow it commercially. And in 2018, we brewed and distilled Hunter and Goldthorpe. It's Jurassic Farley, yes. Back in 2016, Mark Rainey, our CEO, requested us to have a look at different varieties in our journey for different flavors of raw material. Why is this important and why do the heritage varieties have an impact or why are they wanted and desired in this industry? And you can look across both the distilling industry as well as the brewing industry. And there's quite a few little heritage varieties that have persisted well after they were agronomically viable. The question is, is why? And so if anybody you ask talks about flavor, we still like them because of the flavor. Back tracing all those heritage grains, it's just, it brings back what was whiskey, what would whiskey taste fresh out of the stills back all those decades ago. I think for the drinkers that are out there, they want more diversity and uh, kind of have a little bit of that history. That would be very interesting also. I am the link between the production side of the distillery and the scientific research. So I work uh, as an the terroir project for the distillery. As I go in with the, the new make spirit, when those spirits from those grains are distilled, I start my research project. So I collect uh, the samples of those and we do sensory analysis and also some of the analytical uh, technique analysis are also sent into different uh, labs, the likes of Chagas. Mm -hmm. And on my side, I analyze all the flavor attributes within the panelists in the distillery, and uh, we try to uh, map the terroir effects in terms of flavor. Tom Bryan, head agronomist in Bortmold, contacted the state body here to see if they have any varieties available, old varieties. To think about in the early 1900s, people traveling on bicycles and horses around Ireland, collecting heads, individual heads in various fields, making sure that they were absolutely perfect. So uh, the opening sequence of Jurassic Park would be exactly like what they were doing Jurassic and what, and what we've done. Hunter was a nuttier, uh, lovely biscuity sort yeah, of taste. beautiful taste on it, relative to, shall we say, the modern malt that we produce from the, the modern varieties. And the Irish Goldtharp as well had a unique flavour profile. So it'll be a really interesting thing when it goes through Waterford Distillery, you produce the whiskey and you get that taste into those individual batches in the fields. It's, it's, it's going to be just mind blowing, I think. At the time, six years ago, I had no information about heritage varieties or heirloom varieties. All I went up there with Tom Bryan was, we want to try and find old seed. In the autumn of 2015, Fort Malt came and actually was investigating, trying to find some heritage varieties. And they actually were kept in these freezers as a, a germ plasma repository that houses the, these older varieties and keeps the germ of each variety stable so you can have it for successive years in the future. We asked could we take a selection of that seed and we grew it up over a number of years outside the maltings in a tie. And three years later, we had enough seed to give to a grower to grow conventionally. The reason why we have a germ plasma repository, you know, a place where these are all stored for Ireland is to identify those lines that are economic, environmentally, and genetically important to the country, but also then correlate and work with other germ plasma repositories, not just for ones for Ireland, but for the world. In Svalbard, and north of Norway in the Arctic Circle, they literally have a germ plasma repository in the mountain. And so it's even a safeguard for this safeguard here for specific collections. And only under dire times do you actually go back in and pull and collect that germplasm back out. They requested to have that germplasm and it was taken at 50 grams outside of the freezer. And then five grams was held back as a reserve. And then 45 grams were planted in the glass houses in these grow bags. What we have here is 25 grams in a bottle, so that's what we started with. And therefore we went from 25 grams to 25 kilos. And we would plant it spaced out 
within that, allowing those plants to then tiller multiple seeds in each bag and, uh, and then grow uh, naturally into under often conditions and then we'd harvest that seed and that would be ready to go out into the field. They were sown in the winter of 2015 and then harvested in early spring of 2016. And because it was harvested in the early spring, it was able to be sown in the field uh, from that four kgs to increase the seed. One of the things for with the heritage varieties, because they're older and they're not as advanced agronomically, you know, to get to your quota for production, you have to then grow extra acreage. And so it's either you pay, so you probably have to pay a premium to get that. It's not just an experiment on flavor, but it's also a financial investment for the distillery into flavor. I think the farm yielded just over one ton an acre that year com compared to four ton an acre for your conventional. Mm -hmm. So that's three, just three times reduction. the land you need, three to four times the land is required to grow the heritage varieties. We're here in one of our labs in, in the research center. We study all the main cropping systems. So Waterford Whiskey approached us looking at ways to explore more heritage varieties. So varieties that we don't see now in our fields. From the 100 kilograms that was harvested off of the trial plots, uh, that was then planted to approximately around three acres, uh, at about 140 pounds the acre. So that would have been like a pre-basic seed production, which was sown in the spring of 2017 and then harvested later in that summer. What we're very interested in though is, can we look at the agronomy? Can we look at the management of these crops to maximize the, the flavor? And again, that, that sensory potential of the crop. And then the following year after that, that seed was then used to sow a commercial size field uh, in the spring of 2018. And then from there, that harvested production was then taken to Bort malt, malted, and then distilled at Waterford in 2019. We say heritage because they're just, just older varieties, but we don't grow them nowadays because they would fail due to other agronomic characteristics that farmers need and what, what the sector demands. The benefit of this material though is that their, their sensory quality in terms of the product that will come out of them, the potential is probably much greater than what, what exists at the moment because through decades of breeding that those sensory characteristics have possibly been bred out of the existing material we have. So at the moment we're currently putting all the flavour profile together, so we were waiting for the old Irish to be distilled uh, to complete the research. Each harvest year is different then, so depending on what the climate is like, you might have an unsuccessful harvest and it puts you back a year. So for everything to work correctly, it could take four years before we would see the heritage malted barley at the distillery. Then it takes another three years of maturation in cask, so six, seven year project before the customer can even taste what the flavors coming off these heritage varieties is like. So it's a long wait, but it might be worth it. it might just be worth it. <laughs>